So let's talk about lexical this, which is one of the oldest yet important aspects of JavaScript. Let's present an example first. Imagine I got an object, user1, with a couple of properties, right? First name, Peter, last name, Williams. All right, and now I got a method, get full name, yeah? Which is a function. This is a function inside of an object. Makes sense, right? Nothing particularly surprising. And now as part of that function, look at what I'm returning. This dot first name space this dot last name. We got that. So now my question is, if now at the bottom I do user one dot get full name, what will this return? The function? What do you mean the function? Um, the function in get full name in user one. Okay, so what's the result? Uh, I think Peter okay. Can you? Alright. Cool. I think it won't work. So okay, why not, Seb? Because this works while you are still inside the... This refers to something inside the object mm. and you are calling a function from the outside the object. Okay, let's have a look. Let's see what happens when we run this. Right, probably need to do a console.log. That's it. So, Sonia is right. Okay. You can see it returns Peter Williams, right? which is something that we can figure out based on the look and feel of my algorithm. However, today I'd like to talk about why. Because even though that case is pretty obvious, and you should be able to follow it quite easily, in a few minutes we'll see other scenarios more complicated to follow. Right? So, before tackling the complex scenarios, let's try to fully understand that. On every single job interview I've done in my life to JavaScript developers, my question is, my first question is, what is lexical this? That's what we are going to learn now. So lexical this, that, that is a keyword in JavaScript, that's an object, generally speaking. That's the first thing, yeah? You see many developers, you know, guessing, talking about buzzwords. No, first of all, let, let's, let's be precise. Lexical this is an object. And what's the value of the object? Lexical this refers to the object that invoked the function where lexical this is. In other words, what's the function? Get full name. Which object invokes get full name? User one. Because of that, lexical this refers to user one. If I had a breakpoint on line number six, hoping breakpoints work, you, you already know that sometimes they don't work as expected. You see, they don't work. Let me try to uh, debugger, see if I can stop it or not. Oh, all right, it, is, it works now. Look at what happened when I hover lexical this. You see, it refers to user one. Why? Because the function was invoked by user one. Easy, right? Any questions? No? I thought that when you were invoking the function outside instead of the, the variable, it wouldn't work. But no, I yeah, it, it does work. It does work. That's the way JavaScript works, right? So that, that, that's fully okay. All right, so that was the easy scenario. But let me present you another one. I'm going to create now a second user. I probably need to zoom it out a bit. Let's see if it works like that. So let user2. And user2 will have first name Marie and last name Smith. 
And now I'm also doing something interesting. Look at what I'm doing in the line below. In the next line, I would like to do let user2 dot get full name equals user1 dot get full name. And finally, let's do user oops sorry user2 oh I define no without let obviously like that. So let's pay attention to what I did. I created a second object, second user, first and last name, but without any method. User number two, line number nine, doesn't have any get full name method. You agree on that, right? However, on the next line, we're creating a reference. We're saying, hey, now user two will also have a get full name function, and it will refer to that function. Yeah, when we assign functions, we are not copying the functions. We're just creating a reference, a pointer. Yeah? So in memory of the system, there is only one function, but we have two objects pointing to the same function. So, what will that return? Mary or Peter? Mary. Why Mary? Mary is me. Why? Correct. Farage got it already. Yeah, Farage is right. Who is invoking the function? User one or user two? User two. User two. Because of that, lexical this points to user two. Let's let's prove that. Here you go. You see? Does it make sense? It's not that complicated, right? Again, lexical this refers to the object that executes the function where lexical this is. And that's the simplest definition of what lexical this is, right? You'll remember me once you get that question on your next job interview. All right, that could be a bit more complicated, a bit more spicy. Let me show you an example. Let me show you an example. Let's get rid of user two. So let's focus on user one, only user one. But now look at what I'm doing. First name equals Anthony. Last name equals uh, Smith again, right? Whatever. And now look at what I'm trying to do. What happened here? Will it return Peter, Anthony, undefined, error? User one, so it will display Peter according to you, Sony. Mm -hmm. Are we calling the method get full name with user one? Are we doing user one dot get full name? No. no. No, no. I'll give you a hint. I'll give you a hint. Whenever we got this sort of variable declaration, these are global, global variable declaration. Hmm? Do they work even if you don't put let? That's a good point. I understand that sounds weird to you, right? Because historically speaking, you've used let or bar or cons. But look at here. We got nothing. No prefix. No prefix. But look at what happened. Ooh. Why the hell does it work? Anthony Smith? We said that the lexical this referred to the object. There is no, ah, there is no object here. There is no object? Mm, I'm not convinced about that. Why? Because whenever we declare things like that, these are considered global variables. Global. And a global variable essentially belongs 
to the root object in JavaScript. Does anyone know which is the root object in JavaScript? Esteban? Yeah, that's correct. It's window. In other words, whenever you do weird things like that, yeah, if you're lucky enough to not to be fired from the company, you will be able to define that in reality, in reality, this is equivalent. And if I do that, I hope now it becomes a bit more readable. It's easier to understand that the value, the printed value, will be Anthony Smith. Why? Because lexical this refers to what? And what, what is that object? Uh, it's window. window. Yeah? Window dot get full name, lexical this will refer to window. That's why it works. This example is a bit simpler because window is explicitly there. But in reality, it's optional. So you may see that code and that's valid. To me, this is a bad practice. We shouldn't clear, create global variables. And we'll see in a minute why. We shouldn't do that. But at least you should know that that's still valid. And if we do that, it works, right? Let's add a breakpoint. Let's have a look to what window contains. Let me add, uh, let me stop it there. Look, window. You see, you notice it took a while to render. Uh, you see? Why? Because it's a huge object. Look at how many weird properties we have here. We don't care about that, right? But that's the way it works. So window is declared by JavaScript. This is part of the standard. And if we scroll down, no, probably not down, if we scroll to the top, we'll find our first name uh, here you go well we got last name you see I'm, I'm sure we got the less the first name as well here you go so is that correct yes is that a good practice no avoid using globals yeah and we'll see in a minute why we should avoid using globals. this is, has nothing to do with javascript in coding generally speaking we should avoid using globals because a global is a big box where everyone can access, everyone can read, everyone can update. Imagine that you are creating a platform with other developers and you all try to take control on the global window object. That's a bit scary. What happens if someone else on a different component tries to change the value of the first name or the last name? He or she will break our code and vice versa. Yeah? That's why variables should be local, because then we know that we have full control on them. All right, so that's the way it works with the global. But, of course, that could be a bit more complicated. What happened? Look, if I, if I delete everything. What will now the algorithm return? Peter Williams. Why? Because you're calling it a function, no? No. We don't have user one dot get full name. Lexical this refers to the object that invokes the function. Which object is invoking the function now? The window. It's the window. Save is correct. It's the window. So that's that is the same as that. But but we remove the code, right? We don't have any first name on window. We don't have any last name on window. We didn't even assign that function to the window object. So even, even if we leave it like that, will it work or not? But isn't what you wrote no. before still on memory? No, the question is good from Seth. Visually speaking, imagine that uh, 
I'm trying to solve this problem and I have no idea why the outcome is what it is. We'll see in a minute. And I call you, any of you, and you come here and you will think immediately that should throw an error because get full name is not a method of the window object. However, when you run it, as you can see, still works. Anthony Smith, it, and you will say, what the hell? There are no references to An Anthony Smith on my screen. Where is that coming from? Yes. So the thing about the window object, as I suggested before, is that it persists. Unless I kill that tab, if I refresh the page, everything, window object is still there. Yeah? Because it's still there, you may end up having that weird situation where visually speaking, you don't have any reference to Anthony Smith, but because you did have a reference in the past, it's still in memory. That's another good reason why we should avoid using global window. Yeah? So don't do that. But still, you may land on a project where they have a problem. So at least you should be able to understand that this is because of the window object, which is dangerous, right? So let's avoid using it. Any questions? How do, how do you remove Anthony Smith from the window? Oh, that's a good question. How do you remove Anthony Smith from the window? Well, the first thing I will do is I will kill the window, I will restart my laptop, I will have a drink, I will come back, and eventually it will work, right? But, if you want to be a bit more polite, well, you can always do something like that. You can do delete window dot first name, delete window dot last name, and delete window dot get full name. What will it return now? Undefined? Hmm. So Katrina said undefined. Any other opinion? An error. An error. Mm. Oh, I like that. Yes. Yes. Now we've deleted, we wipe any reference to get full name. Because of that, there is no get full name function. That returns undefined. However, if we are trying to execute it, what happens when you try to execute something that is undefined? It throws an error. We know not get full name is not a function. Yeah? So we manage to clear these variables. But still, if I end up looking at that code, it's, again, it's like, what the hell? Who did that? Why you need to do that? This is smelly, smelly, right? So this is a workaround to solve another workaround. Let's try to avoid ending up on that situation because that's very hard to maintain and to keep under control. Any questions? No? All right, so the last part of the first part of the session is once you manage to explain what lexical this is and the employer like your approach, blah, blah, blah. Now the second question is, is there a way to change lexical this on the fly at runtime? In other words, let me put back user two. User two, first name, first name, Mari, last name, Smith. So, there is nothing new. I'm just reverting the code to a previous uh, snapshot. So if I do console.log user, sorry, I need to save the reference. So I need to do um, get full name user one dot get full name, right? So if we got something like that, and now we do user two dot get full name again. What will this what will that return? Peter or Mary? Mary. No. 
Lo cual... Right, this is the reason why I didn't want to do everything in one go, right? Because this is the most fundamental aspect we explain. If you don't understand that, there is no point of continuing with this workshop, right? So, it so will... It be Mary Smith because... Yeah, of, of course. It will be Mary Smith because who is invoking get full name? Is it user one? No, it's user two. So, it will refer to that object, right? And if we run it, yeah, correct. It returns Mary Smith, right? But, but, now, there is a question. Is there a way to, um, how to say that, display Peter Williams without, if we do user one or get full name, of course, right? I will do Peter Williams, no problem at all. But, leaving it like that, is there a way to say, yes, run user two or get full name, but in reality, in reality, I want to change the value of lexical this. Instead of referring to that object, I want to refer to that object. Yes, there is a way to do that. Look, instead of calling the function, we can type something quite nice that is call. You may have seen that. And call is a way to invoke functions in JavaScript. With call, we can pass some arguments. And the first one, which is the most important, is the new lexical this. In other words, here we said, A, hey, JavaScript, I want to run user getful name, but wait, 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 wait. I want to redefine the value of lexical this. So in here, we can pass a new object with whatever value we want. For instance, first name, Boris, last name, Smith again. I'm not very creative with the last names, as you can see. All right, so if we run that code, what will it display? Peter, Boris, or Marie? Marie. It's Boris, correct. Here you go. Yeah? You see, we, we change the value of lexical this on the fly. If we add a breakpoint again, look at the value of lexical this now. You see? We change it in real time. So that's the advantage of using call. Have you, of, and of course, what happens if instead of passing the object, I pass user one? What will it display now? Marie or Peter? Peter? Of course, it's Peter, right? Because again, whatever we pass here, it will be the new value of lexical this. That's the way you can overwrite it. Any questions? Yeah? What if you pass the first name and you leave empty the last name? You? Uh, can you say it again? You pass only the first name? Yes. So first name is going to be Stefan. Would it be Stefan Williams? Mm. That's an interesting question. So what will it return? Stefan Williams? Stefan Smith. Stefan Smith? Stefan... What, what's your last name, Stefan? Esteban López, maybe? No, because it's still user2 calling the function. Yeah. Right, let's print out some options. Option 1, Esteban López. Option 2, Esteban Smith. Option 3, Esteban Williams. Option 4, other. Please specify. Oh. Option two, definitely. So, option two, option three. Hmm. That's a good question, actually. 
I'll tell you, I'm not 100% sure. I'll tell you what I'm 85% sure it will return. That should display Esteban undefined. Why? Because he believed that that highlighted code on line number 11, it will be, that will be the new lexical this. And then it will say, hey, do I have this at first name? Yes, here you go, Esteban. No problem at all. Return Esteban plus this dot last name. Do I have last name here? No. And the fine. I think. Let's, try, let's, let's have a look. Let's run it. Here you go. It's correct. Esteban and the file. Yeah? So JavaScript is not trying to mix objects and, and perform any complex algorithm. No, no. That's the new lexical this. If a property is available, use it. If it's not available, undefined. Yeah? Which is good. That's a good question, actually. Anything else? No? Let me change the example a bit. Let me change the example a bit. Imagine that, let me get rid of the call thingy. I'll bring it back in a minute. But imagine that we want to pass an argument. We want to pass a greeting. Like, hello, welcome, how are you? All these things, right? And we display the greeting. So our function expects one argument. So now if I put hello here, can you tell me what the function will print out? Hello, Mary Smith. Yeah, Catherine is right. Hello, because we're passing it, and then we refer to Mary, because lexical this refers to user2. In user2, first name is Mary, last name is Smith, right? Easy, easy. But now, back to the previous example where I'm using call. This is what we got before now. So now the question is, how do we pass now the greeting? How do we pass the, the argument? What will that return? <laughs> Correct. That will return undefined, Esteban undefined, which is a weird message, right? So we, 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 know, we know the second undefined, we know why. We know because we are missing the last name. Let's put the last name. And leave it, leave it empty. What happens if you leave it empty? Will it become Smith or will it just stay? It's plenty. That will display undefined Esteban empty string, right? So, all right, we got that now. And now the question is how do we pass the greeting? Not really. I'll show you. When we use call, the first argument is lexical this. We, we know that. But then we can pass more arguments. The second argument will be the first one of the function. So if we run that, you see? It's the way call works. So call expects at least one argument. The context, the new lexical this. And then you can pass the arguments because our function may have arguments, right? Imagine that apart from the greeting, we want to pass the score of Esteban, right? So score score right so we want to pass more than one argument how do we pass a number with the score of esteban in the platform in this case yeah after high correct comma. yeah that's it that's it after a high comma you see comma separated list of arguments and that will display hi esteban score 81 
That's the way you can pass arguments using call. On the other way around, you want to put what the number first? Yeah, before first name. I mean. Before first name, like that. That's controversial. That's very controversial. What will that return? Because the first thing is the lexical this. Correct. Will, I don't know. <laughs> That will probably blow up the internet, right? Yeah. Because now lexical this is a number. Yeah? And then you're doing 81 point first name. That will return either undefined or an error. Oh, Something weird. Yeah? Something weird. And now you can see a score is high. Why? Because the score, which is the second argument of the function, is the third one of call, right? Remember, the first argument, lexical this. The second argument does the greeting. And the third argument does the score. So that's a bit weird, right? So don't do that. First of all, always lexical this. And then a comma separated list of arguments. No, it, it return it return an object because greeting is now an object. You see, lexical this is eighty one. That doesn't really make sense. Look, let's let's read let's read the different parts. Why the greeting is an object? Because the greeting is that thing, right? Here. That's the first argument of the function. That's an object. Why first name is undefined? Because what's the value of lexical this? 81, correct. Number dot something, that used to fail, right? Return is undefined. And finally, why score is high? Because that's the last argument of the function. So that doesn't really make sense, right? Again, first argument lexical this, and then a comma separated list of arguments. Any questions? We're finishing, only five minutes left probably. <coughs> so have you ever heard on top of call, there is something else called apply. Very similar, very similar. Does anyone know the difference between call and apply? Yes, dot call and dot apply. The syntax is very similar. The goal is the same. So both methods are useful to change the value of lexical list. So the purpose is the same, but the syntax is slightly different. Does dot apply? Does it does it change the value uh, that's across the entire? Package? No, 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 no. There is no difference in terms of lexical list handling. So lexical this will be equivalent in both cases. The difference is here. The difference is here. With call, we pass a list of arguments with commas. With apply, we need to pass an array. That's the only difference. In other words, apply expects two arguments. First one, the new lexical this. The second one, an array with all the arguments of the function. While with call, how many arguments does it expect? We don't really know. Because we pass a comma separated list of arguments. So if we run it, you see it's equivalent. So they are very similar. Yes, the syntax is slightly different. This is another classic job interview question. What's the difference between call and apply? And there is a horrible answer from some developers that they say, oh, one of them return, uh, uses a comma separated list, the other one is an array. I don't remember which one. That's horrible, don't say that because there is a very simplistic rule to remember that forever until you die. Look, call, 
comma separated list starts with C apply array starts with A you see the point? Yes. you'll remember that forever call comma separated list of arguments apply array that's it there is very very last thing there is a third command so in speaking we, we talk about call apply but there is another one you may have heard about this one does anyone know what i'm talking about now no all right i'll show you bind oh yes bind react yeah yeah you've, seen, you've been using bind now that's where everything starts working together bind is slightly different call and apply are the same but bind is different so with call and apply, you execute the function now. Run the function now using that lexical this, using these arguments, but running now. With bind, it's different. With bind, we don't execute the function. We don't execute it. It doesn't run. It doesn't. In other words, if I now add a breakpoint on line number six, it won't work. Yeah? Bind doesn't execute the function. So then what's the point of using bind? Bind saves a reference to the function so we can execute it later on. The way it works is, let me, let me simplify that a bit. We can create a variable. Let's call it uh, new function the name is horrible so don't 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 follow the naming conventions here and now uh oh sorry that was part of the console log that's wrong i need to move it yeah so let's try to display that here you go you see so i have a variable new functions and that variable will have a pointer to that function get full name using using that lexical this but the function is not going to run yet it's not going to run yet how do we run the function easy anytime later on anytime we execute it a promise no 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 that has nothing to do with promises promises didn't even exist at the time this api was created Right? So here is where you run the function. Can we pass arguments now? Can we pass the greeting? Yes. And of course we can pass the score. So that's the difference between call apply versus bind. And if we run it, if we run it as part of the console log, let's do it again. Here you go. That's it. Call and apply one step. Bind two steps. And of course, now I can run the function many times, right? So can I run the function again? Of course, right? We can call the function. You can see it gets displayed. Let me clear the console. It gets displayed twice. Hello, Esteban91. Hi, Esteban81. So we can reuse it. That's an advantage of using bind. And now you may be thinking, mm, we are passing the arguments here. Can we pass arguments here as well? Yes. Yes, we can. So one of the beautifulness of using bind is that we can pass arguments either here or there. Up to you. For instance, for instance, let's pass both arguments at the time that we bind the function. Look, you see, after lexical this, this is the same as call. Yeah, so bind passes a comma separated list of arguments. Yeah, that's the same. How do you remember if bind uses comma separated list of arguments or an array? I don't have any rule for that, I'm afraid. It's a comma separated list of arguments, right? So with bind, you can pass the arguments either 
at the time that you bind or at the time that you execute. Can you mix them? Can I pass one argument on top and one argument at the bottom? So can I remove 91 here and drop it there? Yes, but I don't know at that time if 81 will take it as a score or anything. Yeah, as a, no, 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 no. Look, look. When we bind, we provided some details. What details? First of all, the scope, the lexical details. That's the most important one. Easy. And now let's talk about arguments. How many arguments are we passing here? Only one. Only the greeting. So then JavaScript is still expecting a second argument. It's not provided here, it's not provided here, but then in the very last minute, at the time we run the function, we say, hey, wait, 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 here you go. Here is my last argument. I'll pass it to you right now. And then as you can see, it works. Yeah? I know this makes everything a bit more complicated, but that's the way it works. Yeah? Call, apply, and bind. Any questions? Yeah? That's a good question. What happened if I got two arguments here and then I keep passing arguments like hell? Something like that. What happened? The function only has two. That's correct. You are, you are right. The function is expecting two arguments. Once the function has received two arguments, it's completely satisfied. That means that even if we keep feeding the function with new arguments, it, it will ignore them, hopefully. Let's, let's try that. That's it. Yeah, you see? Of course, if now we add a third argument, what will happen now? Correct. It will add the hello because that's the next one, right? But still, the other two will be ignored. Anything else? In which cases would you rather use a apply or call? To apply or call, you can easily swap them, right? Don't forget something. Apply and call are very old methods in JavaScript. Yeah? And the reason why they both exist is because not far away, it was very complicated to transform an array into... Uh, now you go for things like the spread operator, right? You remember spread operator dot dot dot? Yeah, yeah. You can easily change. But in the past, that was, that was very painful. That's why JavaScript offered these two alternatives. Uh, yeah. You are not going. You are not probably going to use call and apply every single day of your life. But they are very important principles of JavaScript fundamentals, yeah? and also to be typical in job interviews. So that's why I wanted to leave it towards the end of the bootcamp because hopefully that will be fresh in your mind. Anything else? No. So I would like to stop here because there, there, is, there is something else. There is something else. Yeah. I would like to talk later on, probably today, hopefully today, if not tomorrow, I, on a special workshop about arrow functions. Because all, imagine that you managed to master all these things completely, but then with arrow functions, everything gets invalidated. Because arrow functions change everything. But that's a separate story. That's a separate story. For now, this is how JavaScript has been working from 1995 to 2015. Starting from 2015, there is a new way to deal with lexical this, but we'll learn that later on. Uh, yeah, so unless you have any other questions, let's stop the workshop here and we'll continue um, later on with the second part. Thank you guys.